Greetings on this Wednesday morning, December. It's a rather cold morning today here in Fairport, New York. I'm Ken Pepin. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church. And we are delighted that you came to share in this time of prayer with us. Our altar guild um, is responsible for this beautiful display of Advent wreath. Uh, as you can see, we're on our third week, um, having lit the pink candle on this past Sunday. So we are uh, gathered then with the purpose of prayer. Shower, O oh heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation may be sprung up. And let it cause righteousness to sprout up also. O oh God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and one undivided trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our God, our Savior, now draws near. Oh, come, let us worship him. Oh, God, be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of your countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the people with equity and guide all the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. O oh God, our Savior now draws near. O oh come, let us worship. Our psalm chosen for today is a portion of Psalm 119, beginning at the 49th verse through the 72nd. Remember your word to your servant, because you have given me hope. This is my comfort in my trouble, that your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned from your law. When I remember your judgments of old, O Lord, I take great comfort. I am filled with a burning rage because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me, wherever I live as a stranger. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and dwell upon your law. This is how it has been with me, because I have kept your commandments. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all of my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet toward your decrees. I hasten and do not tarry to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your commandments. The earth, O oh Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O oh Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I was went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than in thousands in gold and in silver. Our scripture today is taken from uh, the Gospel according to Mark. It's actually the first chapter, 
beginning at the first verse. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I sometimes like to place myself in the scene uh, that's described in the scriptures, especially in the Gospels. Um, and in this case, that, that must have been quite an experience for John to have all of these people coming out from all over the place. We're coming out to uh, wash in the Jordan and to be cleansed of their sins and their transgressions and to find some solace and some comfort in knowing that God had forgiven them. And yet John was not looking for his own particular popularity or wasn't there to kind of soak it in and take all this glory because he had filled his church, so to speak, or had his congregation of followers were multitudes he wasn't sort of basking in that and taking credit or kind of <clears throat> looking to, um, to capitalize on that, but rather was pointing toward Jesus, pointing toward the one who was to come. He knew who he was and he knew he wasn't the Messiah. And it was quite clear and, and obviously crystal clear in, in Mark's gospel because Mark begins right away. The first statement that Mark makes is Jesus <clears throat> is defined as the Son of God. So it takes all the mystery away. <laughs> we all know uh, what the intent was and that, that Jesus, <clears throat> and not John, uh, was, was the Messiah, the one to come. Opening our, our own lives to the reality of faith, um, opening our own eyes to the presence of God in our midst, um, often leaves us, you know, needing to kind of identify ourselves, especially in this time as we prepare for Christmas. You know, what is that? What does it mean to to be a bearer of the light of Christ? You know, how are we echoing uh, the words of John of? Um, saying that, yes, you know, our, our issue here at Christmas isn't about us, it's about, it's about Jesus. It's about a relationship with God. Um, and it's about that wonderful gift that God has given us <clears throat> in the presence of Jesus. Um, so our focus then might be more Christocentric or more focused on Christ at the center of our world and our life. And um, so often um, we see this so often in, in demonstrated by people who put their lives ahead of others, people who put their lives in the service of others uh, through our hospitals, especially today, uh, would be a, a wonderful thing to pray about. Uh, as all the nurses and doctors who you know, who go in every day in the midst of this pandemic, knowing that their lives are being risked as well as their families. But they go in and they do their job and they, and they comfort and care for those who are left 
um, dying from COVID. And it's an amazing, an amazing uh, representation of that gift of placing uh, the love of someone else ahead of our own. Uh, quite a demonstration, I think. Something to take with us today in our prayer to think about ways in which we could do that for others. Ways that we could, again, see the presence of Jesus as, as a powerful presence in our life and allowing that to, to take hold. So we turn our hearts toward um, the needs in our community and the needs are great with this pandemic. Um, so we, we begin by praying for our hospital workers or people who are in uh, charge of health facilities uh, throughout our nation, and throughout our world, that they would um, experience our support and our love and um, in any ways we can, can make their lives easier. Um, and perhaps the biggest thing to do is to wear a mask, to keep some social distance from others and to um, wash our hands. It's just as simple as that. It could do a whole lot for our for our frontline workers. So think about those small little efforts again by putting others before ourselves. So we pray for our community, our nation, and our world, for all who work for justice, who work for freedom, and who work for peace, for the just and proper use of our creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger or sorrow or any kind of trouble, for those who are ministered to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, and for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for all who serve God in God's church. Think of those who have demonstrated that love of Jesus in our lives. We pray for those who have asked for our prayer, for uh, people we know who are struggling. Um, we pray for those who are in hospitals or in nursing homes, uh, those who are at home and alone uh, and needing of comfort and the love of others. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Help us, O God, our Savior, deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation and give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness this morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the day and all the days of our life. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ever ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. May God's blessing fill us this day and kindle in us that, that gift, that generosity, that blessing of love love for others more than love for self. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Enjoy your day.